Great. Thanks, Tim. So hopefully everybody can hear me. So I've got a short presentation uh, just to kind of um, give an overview of the webinar and um, and some of the theory, some of the background information that I'd like you guys to have before I actually conduct the experiment. So I'm just going to go through a short like applications uh, or practical significance slide. Uh, the product features, of course, we're going to go through that uh, quite thoroughly. Uh, then we'll we'll address some of the different configurations that you can do with a couple tanks. That's one of the nice nice uh, features of the system. Uh, and some control challenges that come from these configurations. Uh, and then uh, I'll give a just a general system overview, uh, you know, the software that we're going to use, for example, and the I/O and stuff like that. And um, after that, then we can run two experiments and then open it up for uh, some more Q&A, some more open uh, Q&A applications. So this is um, it's more of a specific system that deals with process control. Process control is found in uh, various industries. Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of all your backgrounds of that. You may or may not be from industry, but I'll just briefly go over uh, some stuff. I've got, um, so process control can be found in industries such as uh, the petrochemical industry, pulp and paper plants, uh, water treatment, there's many other examples. On the right there, I sh I'm showing an example of um, a typical process control challenge where you would have uh, you know, uh, an inflow valve and an outflow valve, and you want to control the the level of liquid in the tank, and you would have um, you know um, some kind of sensor to measure that, maybe the flow rate, and then a, a controller, an on-off control valve. So this is a very industrial example um, of something that that you would see in the industry. So they might be they might be using a DCS, which stands for distributed control systems. Uh, PLCs or stuff like that. So that's kind of what I'm showing on this slide here. So different things that they will control in these type of applications are, you know, temperature, fluid tank levels, flow rate. So these are all very uh, popular. All right. So let's introduce the Quantzer Couple Tank System. So I'll, I will be showing you some stuff on the actual system that you see on your screen on the webcam. But also on the presentation, because some stuff is easier to show on here. So first of all, there's two tanks. We have two tanks that are cylindrical. Uh, they're the same size. Then we have two pressure sensors. So we have a pressure sensor on the bottom of each tank. The pressure sensors are used to measure the liquid level in each of these. We have a 12 volt pump there in the back. So that's what's used to pump the water from the base in there, in the or the reservoir. So the water gets pumped from the water up on top here to these outflow valves. Now a little bit about these. Uh, so these outflow or inflow valves, um, inflow because they, they flow inside each each tank, or in this case one of the tanks. So these are uh, what we call an easy connect system. It's easy to you know, do the different connections and uh, change the, the tubing uh, to each tank. The disturbance tap. So the disturbance tap is what you see on the right here. And it's exactly what, what we call it, right? So if you open this, then you'll see some water is already in here. So you can create a disturbance like that. You can change up the system. So it's just another kind of um, another way to the change the, the properties of your system. So instead of having one outflow here, you can have two outflows from tank number one. And then uh, to further change the, so you can change the rate of the outflow of each tank using the different uh, orifices here. So we have a large one, a small one, and the medium ones that are placed on here. So you can switch these up and change the flow rate of the system. So again, right, that reconfigurability notion of, of the couple of tanks, definitely a theme for this, this product. So let's look at um, the three main configurations. Configuration number one, as you call it, is a SISO system. So single input, 
single output system. This system only deals with tank number one shown here. So you have an input and you're measuring the output. And the goal over here would be to, to um, stabilize the level of tank one. So in this case, in configuration number one, we are not using the second tank. We're only dealing with tank number one. So that's like the simplest configuration and the one uh, people usually start with. Configuration number two. So this is what we call a state coupled CISO system. So it is single input, um, multiple output really, because you're measuring both tank one and tank two. Uh, but it's state coupled. So now the goal is to control the level in your second tank. But you have to do that through the first tank. So your inflow would go inside tank number one, and then the, the output of tank, tank one pours into tank number two. So now you're dealing with a coupled system, right? So you have to deal with the level of tank one and tank two in order to stabilize your liquid in, um, in this tank, in the bottom one. So again, this is a little, so this increases the complexity of the system. The third configuration is also the same goal is to control tank number two, but now it's a state coupled and input coupled system. So in this case, you have two inputs in going into your second tank as illustrated by this diagram, right? So you would have another tube coming out of here, again, which is, uh, which is supplied with the system. So you would have, as before in configuration number two, you would have tank number one pouring into tank two, but you would also have the pump feeding directly into tank two. So that's, again, furthers the, the control challenge, if you will. So those are three default configurations that we supply controllers for. And we'll get into more detail and we'll actually run configuration number one and configuration number two in this webinar. So we'll do that uh, after this, after I go through this last one. So we actually have another one called, uh, uh, this is configuration number four, the quad tank example. So if you had two couple tanks and uh, you really want a challenge, then you can connect both of them together. And we've they've had research papers uh, published on this. Uh, Carl Astrom and his student, for example, uh, had a very uh, a very famous research paper on this system. And uh, so the quad tank is an inherently unstable system and uh, a very challenging one to uh, stabilize. But you would need two couple tanks for this. But people have done it before. So now let's talk about the control challenge, right? So if we go back to the single tank example here, uh, the CISO example, the tank one level control. What are the what are the challenges of the system, you know, and what and what is the solution that we give um, that we supply with the system? So I got a transfer function, the transfer function of tank one called the G1 at S. So the input would be the voltage of the pump and the, out, the output would be the level of the tank. So the dynamics of each tank are nonlinear, right? So the level slash pump dynamics or the pump to level dynamics are nonlinear. So you have basically the rate of the level change is proportional to uh, the, the voltage going to the pump times, you know, times the, uh, the appropriate, like, um, you know, gain for the pump and so on, and then minus, like, uh, some, on some other, like, the cross-sectional area and other properties of the tank multiplied by the current level of the tank, but square rooted, right? So you initially see that they are nonlinear. But the nice thing about this system is, although it's nonlinear, it's not too bad to derive compared to, like, say, a rotary inverted pendulum. So these nonlinear dynamics are a lot more manageable uh, from a student aspect to derive. So how do we stabilize level one? So here is the control that we supply. So it's your PI controller. So if you ignore the front part here, so you have a, a standard PI controller with an anti windup. Just uh, we have that windup protection, obviously. Um, to prevent actuator um, 
to prevent any wind up from going on, like any large overshoots from happening if the actuator, if the actuator, uh, the pump in this case becomes saturated. But the neat thing about this one is we have a feed forward loop. So the reference is given here on the left, right? So your reference level LR1 is your set point. So initially we'll be commanding a set point say, of 15 centimeters, which would be right here. And this, will, this is what we'll do when we conduct the actual lab. So you want to stabilize it at 15 centimeters. And once it's stabilized there, we give it 15 seconds. Then it, we can start tracking a, a step input. But in order to reach that uh, level um, quicker, instead of just um, having a, a PI control and having all and having the PI control do all the work, you can get a head up on this and use a feed forward loop. So if you know your set point, you already know a lot about the dynamics of the system. So by utilizing that, you can uh, increase the response time tremendously by using a feed forward loop. So this is the solution we'll be showing. And uh, later on, I'm going to be showing the files. And I'll, I'll demonstrate how, how the actual implemented files look a lot like the theory. Tank 2 control. So now on tank 2 control, this is configuration number 2. Uh, so we're controlling tank number 2, but we're doing that through the pump via tank 1, right? So pump is feeding into tank 1. Tank 1 is feeding into tank 2 and want control tank two, so it's a little bit more difficult. And that's what this diagram on the screen here shows you, right? So uh, now T1, T underscript one, that would be, that's basically what I, I showed you on the previous slide. So that's tank one in closer control. So you feed a set point and you get a measurement from it. Hopefully they're the same, right? And then that pours, so, and then that pours into tank two which is represented by the open loop transfer function called the G subscript two, and you get a measurement. So what is the solution? What's the algorithm we use to solve this problem? So there, so there, uh, tank one closes the control, the tank two, tank one dynamics, and the solution we use would be, again, a PI control with that feed forward loop. So the outer loop feeds into the outer loop for tank number two, gives a set point to the previous controller that I showed you on tank number one that supplies the voltage to the pump. So that's so what we have here is a nice cascade control. We offer courseware with the system. So we offer full student and instructor workbooks and some of the topics it outlines are uh, uh, modeling the system through the Bernoulli principle from first principles, uh, obtaining the transfer function, linearization of the nonlinear dynamics in order to get that transfer function. Uh, so then that's where you deal with the linearization and stuff. That's where you deal a lot with uh, the operating points, for instance. Uh, some model validation is also included, and we'll be showing that when I'm uh, in the demonstration. For control design, we have feed forward, PI level control design, and the cascade. So everything is ABET aligned as well. So if your university is ABET accredited or you're up for ABET accreditation, you'd be happy to know that all this all this material has been aligned with ABET. The system overview. So the controller I'm going to be running on my actual laptop. This is talking to what's called um, a Quantor Q2 USB. It's a type of data acquisition card that's been optimized for control, and that's what I'm using to interface to the I/O to the hardware. So that sends a control signal to the amplifier, which you see on your screen here. You might see on the left here. So it's a black, the black box showing your screen, or if you can see it on your webcam, that's the amplifier that drives a pump. So it has a gain of three, drives a pump on a couple tanks, and then you read your pressure sensors, convert those to level measurements, and uh, so depending on those level measurements, uh, you recompute a new a new pump voltage based on that PI feed forward loop. So that's basically how the system architecture looks like um, in, in a practical uh, point of view. Software options, uh, so some of you, uh, I think 40% or something of you, you are MATLAB Simic users. So um, yeah, we definitely have the solution for MATLAB Simic, but we also have a solution for LabVIEW users. So we have two softwares for each. Uh, 
The one we'll be using today for MATLAB Symlink is we'll be using the Quark software. So Quark is a rapid controls prototyping software made by Quanser, and it basically it generates real-time code from the Symlink diagram, as you'll see in the demonstration. It has I/O blocks and stuff like that. Uh, so I'll be going through a short. You'll be seeing this in the, the actual demonstration, but if you want more information about that, I encourage you to first look at our website about Quark. And also, we have a webinar exclusively about Quark. Uh, so you can look that up on our site as well. So we have a pre-recorded webinar on this. If you're a LabVIEW user, then we have what's called the Rapid Controls Prototyping Toolkit for LabVIEW. So this basically makes, um, it has a, a lot of the same, so it allows you to use Quantum data with acquisition cards, for example, if you want to use a Q2 USB, uh, then you could use it through uh, this RCP, uh, RCP toolkit. But also supplies support for many of the NIDACs, just like Quark, um, has a whole number of different functions to make control design easier in, in LabVIEW. And uh, yeah, so it has a, a, a number of advantages to speed up your development. So again, we have a webinar on this as well as some uh, information on our website. So I encourage you to look at that if you want some more information. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop it here. I'm gonna minimize this and uh, yeah, I think we can get to the demo. So I'm just gonna clear up my screen here. Now, so these are the files that are supplied with the couple tanks. So, uh, we have a bunch of similar diagrams and MATLAB scripts. So, the setup lab tanks is like the main script that you want to run. So, because I'm running, uh, so there's basically there's an instructor version and the student version. So, I'm going to be, I got the control type set to auto here, which means I want to automatically generate my PI gains and feed forward gains because. Uh, um, I don't think we have enough time this afternoon for me to go through all the control design uh, aspect of this system. So we're just going to go ahead and generate those gains automatically. Now I'm going to set tank configuration to number one in my script. And then if I run the script, then you'll see that it, it generates my proportional gain, my integral gain, and the feed forward gain based on the control specs that I selected, which is right here, right? So my overshoot, I want 11%, selling time, 5%. That means 5 seconds, sorry. So a selling time of 5 seconds with an overshoot of 11% are my control uh, requirements. I've set my wind-up loop to 3 volts. And you, know, you can, of course, change these to get some different behavior. The similar diagram is uh, for, tank, uh, for configuration number 1, the tank 1 level control looks as follows, right? So, um, as you can see, the con if we look at the control loop here, it looks identical pretty much to that PowerPoint slide that I showed you, right? The background theory. So you have your feed forward loop and you have your PI control with the anti windup implemented in it. Uh, we do have a voltage limit that goes to the amp because we're dealing with a pump. Remember that uh, another I guess you could call it control challenge, or is the pump can only be given a positive voltage, right? So, of course, all of our control signals are from zero and above. And uh, they're limited to 22 volts peak, but our steady state is uh, below 12 volts because that's the rating of the pump. We're running both the, you'll also note that in the blue, this is the actual plant. So this, these are, if I double click on this, this is the IO blocks in Quark. So I have hill-write analog and hill-read analog time base. These two blocks interface with the data acquisition device, which then talk to the couple tanks. So my hill-write analog spits out my control signal to the DAC, which goes to the amplifier, which applies the voltage to the pump. The hill-read analog time base, this reads my, uh, the A D. So it reads my analog input signals from the pressure sensors. You convert your pressure to um, to a level in centimeters, and that gets passed through two filters. We also have uh, two safety watchdogs, which is what you see here, tank number one level watchdog and tank number two level watchdog. So these are safety watchdogs imposed 
just in case that um, if the level does go above uh, a certain threshold, like 27 centimeters or something, then cork stops automatically, right? So you avoid any spillover. On the green block here is a simulation. So we're doing uh, what I was talking to, I was talking about this before, that whole model validation aspect, right? So we've included the model of the system in here. So that's the same loop, and then we have the, the nonlinear dynamics actually, uh, as you can see, they're not that bad, right? So we've implemented the nonlinear dynamics of the system directly in Simlink. So it's going to be simulating the system in parallel with the actual plant. On the left here is your, your tank one level set point. So that's your reference. So I think we're all set here. I've got the amplifier powered, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, fire this up. Uh, so remember, we're not doing a simulation. Because we're running hardware, we're actually using the simulation diagram to like um, quote unquote code our controller, right? So now uh, the other aspect that Quark does is it lets me generate code. So if I click on the Quark menu here, which is available after you install Quark, and go to build, then that will generate the real-time code. So you can see here in my MATLAB command window, it generates a code. It says download into the target. The target, again, is the same as my development PC, aka my laptop. And we're good to go. We can start running this. So I'll go Quark, start. And then you'll see it. And I'm going to show you the two. Here is my response. So I'm showing you the scope. And again, so initially it symbolizes the 15 centimeters, and then it will give a step going plus or minus 2 centimeters. So that means it will go down to 13, then it will go up to 17. So look at how the level behaves in the tank in parallel with the scope that I'm showing you on, on the screen here. The purple line is your reference. That's your set point. And your, your yellow is your measure. That's your measure value. So the yellow is your measure value from your uh, pressure sensor. And the, the light blue is from your simulation. I'm just going to stop this. You can actually extend, just going to extend this to show you more data on a plot. I'm just going to extend that. If I do this. I'm just going to go that way. You can sh I'll show the full spectrum data on the scope. And I'm just going to rerun it because it's a bit, um, it will be beneficial for. To show a rerun, just so you can see it behave uh, one more time before we uh, get into something more complicated. There we go. So you see it being stabilized to 15 again. So again, the yellow line is my measured signal from the pressure sensor. So initially, it gets stabilized to 15. After 15 seconds, we engage a step, right? So the yellow and the blue. Uh, do have some discrepancy, but they match. They match fairly well. So that is tank one level control. Again, the CISO system, where you're dealing with the nonlinear dynamics of the tank, but no coupling whatsoever or anything like that. So of course. This simulation diagram is, is fully open, so you can go in and tune um, and change parameters. Everything is fully open. Another thing to monitor is this is a pump voltage. So the pump voltage allows to go from, from 0 to 22. So that's another thing to look at is your actual pump voltage, right? Because uh, all the times that we perform simulations, we forget about the actuator limits. Okay, so that's about it for 
the tank one level control. So let's go back to my swimming diagram and click on stop. And let that empty. Alright, so the second demonstration is your your double tank, right? So now if you want to control tank number two through tank number one. First of all, I've changed my script saying that I will be using configuration number two. So I select tank configuration number two, and I'll go ahead and rerun that, and it'll generate a set of two gains now, right? So we have the tank one level loop. So we have PI control with a feed forward uh, gain calculated. But now we also have that tank two controller. And tank 2 control, remember, uh, feeds the set point of the inner tank 1 loop. Close this. So let's open up the second summit diagram called 2 tanks 2. So as with the previous diagram, we also have a simulation of, of the full system. So in here we have, again, the tank 2 controller. As you can see, it looks at very much like the the background theory, the inner loop for tank number one and the tank one tank two model, and then we have the implemented controller on above here and the set point as as before. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and generate the code. So I'll click on cork build. This generates the code for me. So this is nice because I don't have to do any manual coding, right? So it actually it speeds up development a lot. I can focus on the control design here. And all right, let's do that. So now remember, you want you're looking at the bottom tank. So the bottom tank has a stabilized grip lead ten. So it fills up tank one to about twenty five. And then we get tank number two to stabilize to about that level here. And then once after 30 seconds or so, we'll start giving a step response. So then it goes up to plus one. So then it goes up to about 16, down to 14. So now you can see it's working with a lot more coupling, right? Because now you're dealing with the whole dynamics of tank number one feeding into tank number two in order to stabilize that. And if I want to make it even more challenging, then I could add this disturbance tap, right? So this adds a disturbance to the system, and now my pump is working a lot harder to compensate for this, right? And again, I could change the outflow valves. I could change that as well. So this again, we're showing both uh, the measured and the simulation values together. So the purple is your measured, while your um, the light blue is simulated. So I'm showing the level two response here on the screen, but we also have the module level one response, as well as the pump voltage. You want to see these in parallel. So you'll know the pump voltage does, the pump does get saturated up to 22. Uh, that's fine, but the, the container's voltage is below 12 volts, which is the way of voltage rate, so we are mindful of that. So there you go, that's the uh, configuration number two response. 
then I'm gonna stop the code. So those are the two experiments I want to to uh, demonstrate, and um, yeah, I think um, I think that about wraps it up. So if you guys have any questions, I'll pass it back to uh, Tim.